What's happening, guys? Keith here with another Impact Wrestling review. So tonight we are going to take a look at the Under Pressure TV special. So I took a week off, like I told a lot of people on Twitter. Just needed to kind of step back, recharge the batteries, but I am back to it. Um, really good show this past week. Um, another show I felt like the Orlando crowd didn't deserve because they should have been a lot more hyped than they were, but... I understand everything going on there. We have the Windsor tapings tonight and tomorrow night, so hopefully the crowd there is a little more amped up. So we open the show with Sanjay Dutt conducting a meeting about all the attacks that have been happening recently. Uh, Sanjay assures everyone that management is doing everything they can. At this point, Caleb Conley kind of opens his mouth, which is funny because you look at him and he's got the beard now and everything. You're like, who the hell is that guy? So he says he doesn't believe that management is doing anything because they're not the ones being attacked. Um, and then PD gets up and kind of defends Sanjay's statement, and it's just like, hmm, maybe there's something a little fishy going on there. So I don't know if the attacker was revealed during the Orlando tapings or it's something that's going to happen in the future um, because I believe we still have a couple weeks left of the Orlando tapings, and I think think the Windsor tapings are going to lead us right up until Slammiversary. Uh, somebody correct me if I'm wrong, because I'd actually like to know myself. Uh, and our first match of the evening was Scott Steiner versus Eli Drake. Probably not the match that I would have opened the show with. I mean, Scott Steiner, since he's been back, has been in nothing but tag matches, and it was pretty much to protect him because his mobility isn't quite what it used to be, considering the fact that he's probably close to 60 years old now. Um, but I mean, the backstory made sense to have the match here. Um, two guys with huge egos, uh, a lot of trash talking going on, and that was pretty much the most entertaining part of the match. Um, but, you know, there, there was very limited stuff that Steiner could do in the ring, and thankfully Eli Drake is a versatile wrestler, and he can kind of wrestle to the opponent's strong or their style, basically. You can pretty much throw them in the ring with anybody. Um, but, you know, we saw a couple suplexes from Steiner. Nothing crazy. Uh, they go on the outside. Eli tries to hit him with a chair. Uh, Steiner ev evades it. They go back in the ring. And we kind of see the same spot that's set up for their tag title loss, where uh, this time it was Eli outside the ring. Uh, the ref got bumped. He kind of took a second to collect himself steiner went to lean his head out the ropes eli outside the ring hits him in the head with the chair goes in the ring pins him and he is your winner um i'm not sure if this is going to continue really shouldn't this should really be it i i think this would have been a lot better had it been chris adonis since his departure was kind of uh not expected during the January tapings, and I think that's what led to Steiner and Eli Drake being a tag team together because it was supposed to be Drake and Adonis, which would have made a lot more sense. But whatever it is what it is, um, the big story right now is whether or not Eli Drake is going to sign a new contract. I believe he had an extension. I'm not sure when it is until, but I mean, uh, I don't know. It's a tough call, to be completely honest. I would love for him to stick around. I mean, the only reason I would like to see him in WWE is so I can get more merchandise of him. That, that That's about it. Maybe an action figure or a pop figure, something like that. That, that. But that's about it. I love seeing him in Impact Wrestling. Um, when I started watching again, which was last summer, you know, Eli was the person that kind of piqued my interest in it. And I was like, I can really get behind this guy, considering the fact that, like, my second episode watching was the one that he won the world title you know, he held that all the way through January, and new management comes in first night. They take the title off him. Um, he gets a little momentum when he wins the Feaster Fired briefcases. Then they win the tag titles. He goes to cash in, loses his match against Pentagon when he cashed in the world title briefcase. And, yeah, their booking of him has kind of been a little, a little weird, so I don't know where we go from here with Eli, so like I said, hopefully he resigns because I think he is a, a person they should definitely hold on to. He can be the face of Impact Wrestling. Um, but moving on, we go backstage to the virtual studio. They hype the rest of the show. Same old stuff. And that brings us to Tessa Blanchard. Tessa Blanchard versus Madison Rain. Um, really good match. I, I enjoyed it. I, I think... 
Tessa Blanchard is a hell of a wrestler and definitely the right person to bring in. Um, when the rumors of her coming in at Bound for Glory were hitting, I was like, oh man, she would be a hell of a person to get on this Impact roster. And then that was quickly shot down. But six months later, and here she is. So, you know, can't really complain about that. And Madison Rain looked great and she did a good job of making Tessa look good. Uh, she Madison started off really hot, kind of just using her quickness. And uh, eventually that got derailed by Tessa. She used her size and strength. I mean, beating the crap out of Madison. And uh, Tessa was trying to put her away, obviously getting frustrated that she couldn't do it. Uh, kind of gets in the referee's face. So Madison's able to collect herself a little bit. Tessa goes to set up Madison for the Hammerlock DDT. Madison's able to counter it, roll Tessa up, and she wins the match. A um, little bit of a surprise here, but I like the way they did it because you kind of book yourself in a corner when you bring in a dominant person and you just keep having them win and win and win. And, you know, a loss like this doesn't hurt the person. So I like what they did here. Um, when I, I'll get to something a little later on that's similar that I'll talk about um, involving a different person, but similar booking. Um, but, yeah, speaking of the knockouts, um, we learned today that former Phoenix of Rise champion, the ballsy badass Shotzi Blackheart, has been selected by the producers of Impact Wrestling to receive an opportunity at this Saturday's television tapings in Windsor. Um, she was chosen for this opportunity after making a tremendous impression upon Impact Management at both the Lights, Camera, Action, the Art of TV seminar, and the Rise Ascent tapings from May 11th and 12th. Um, so, great news there. I don't know too much about her, but there was a lot of buzz about her. I think there was talk about her joining the May Young Classic this year. So, hopefully things work out and we have a new knockouts. So, up next, we go to the clubhouse. LAX's clubhouse, that is. And Ortiz and Santana are playing cards. King shows up, brings him a briefcase, some booze, and two pieces of ass, as he says. Um, and he says, he's not done. I got two more pieces of ass for you. And that's the cult of Lee, Trevor Lee and Caleb Conley, because he says they need to get revenge for disrespecting them. Um, so on Twitter, Diamante had posted, oh, look, life's peachy after King shows up. Nah, not at all. Everything ain't sweet. Hashtag streets are watching. So I think things are going to get a little more interesting when the uh, LAX faction and should be good because uh lax definitely deserves the spotlight i think they are a fantastic tag team and yeah so up next we have the desmond xavier versus brian cage match xavier earned this opportunity after defeating pd williams last week uh, i don't know what type of opportunity this is but we all knew how the outcome was going to be in this match um but I, I have to give it to desmond he definitely looked good in the match he put in a bunch of offense, was able to knock the big man down a few times. Um, and, you know, he, it, it wasn't a squash match. So that was really, I think, what a lot of people were worried about. Um, Cage obviously picks up the victory with the drill claw. And uh, we learned that he's going to get a future X Division title shot. So that should be interesting. I, I don't want them to, you know, kind of put the title on him and then him just be completely dominant. That was one of the worries I had when they brought him in and uh, I guess we'll just have to see where it goes from here. Uh, it, could be, it could be very interesting between Seidel and himself. We'll see uh, how well they book Seidel against him and uh, how long this feud is going to be, if this is going to be a match that ends up happening at Slammiversary, or hell, it might have even happened on the tapings. I don't know. Um, but after the match, he did show Xavier a sign of respect, kind of helping him up, shaking his hand, and giving him props for the match they put on. So... That was that. We go backstage, and McKenzie interviews Austin Aries about asking him what his championship match means to him. Uh, he kind of says that until Pentagon beats him one-on-one, -on -one, he can't call himself the man, and he won't have his brother by his side tonight. He says losing our redemption was just a bump in the road, and he's taking back his championship. Pretty standard here. Then we have the last rights match for the Knockouts Championship. Ali defending against Sue Young. Um... I'm a sucker for gimmick matches and casket matches, last rights matches, whatever you want to call them. One of my favorite matches. Um, and they did this match really well. So Allie comes out to her normal music. She's kind of in the half 
face paint that we saw last week. And then all of a sudden, as she's making her way out, they play Rosemary's music. So I really like the way they did that. Um, just just good. I, I was worried that they were just going to do the Alley music. And I was kind of like, eh, that would have been dumb. But they didn't. Alley is embracing the darkness. Um, one thing I did notice, not that this is really anything important, but just a little thing I noticed, was that they did not have the Under Pressure logo on the Tron during this match. So this was obviously taped a different night. Um, just a little thing, you know, things like that always catch my eye. Um, but yeah, no, was, it, this was a fun match. Like I said, I love gimmick matches. Um, let's see. Oh, Allie got knocked down and she kind of did the rising up like Rosemary does. Very cool spot. Uh, Allie almost puts her away with a code breaker on the chair. Wasn't the prettiest looking spot, but not really the easiest move to do with a chair that's safe. You know, we haven't seen the, uh, safest chair moves. Um, but she hits a code breaker on chair, goes to put her away. Su Young gets out. Super kick on the apron. Su Young falls in, unable to get her out. And as Allie's kind of trying to close it on her, Su Young puts her hand out of the casket, coffin, whatever you want to call it. Hits Allie with the mandible claw and just kind of drags Allie in and dumps her in the coffin, closes it. Su Young's the new knockout champion. Um,. I believe this spot had happened years and years ago with Mankind doing it to The Undertaker, and it was a really cool spot then, and it was really cool now. I like the way they did it. Um, surprised they put the championship on Soo Young, to be completely honest, but um, I guess we'll see what happens. Uh, I, I would assume once Rosemary's back, this will be a Soo Young-Rosemary thing, but I'm curious to know what they do with Allie. Um, maybe she will go uh, full darkness. Then we get the GWN flashback, and this was a last rights match between Sting and Abyss. Thankfully, they kept it short. That's about it. Then we get a video promo from Pentagon Jr. Josh and Don hype the main event in the virtual studio, and then we get a video similar to what closed the show last week where we saw the X symbol on Jimmy Jacobs, but we find out that backstage, Sanjay Dutt is the one laid out, and Petey is the one that finds him, so... A little interesting there. Um, and then we get... <laughs> Eddie walks up to Alicia backstage and says, It's me and Callahan in the woods. No ropes, no ref, no rules. I'm going to murder him. Now, holy shit. Uh, I think he's gone off the deep end just a little bit, but this this feud is just... They didn't even need to do anything. Just this little segment kind of continues it, and uh, that should be interesting. I believe that's going to happen next week. It was hyped on their uh, Twitter page. Um, one thing that does bother me about sometimes the way the show is laid out, and I just noticed this now, because generally between the matches, you have a segment, and then we go on to the next match, a segment, we go on to the next match, and between the Ali and Su Young match and the main event championship match, we had four different segments. I just feel like it kind of kills the flow of the show a little bit, um, but just me nitpicking. And that brings us to the main event. Austin Aries versus Pentagon Jr. for the World Championship. Um, split crowd, no surprise. I mean, like I said, the, the Orlando crowd is just just killing us. Um, thankfully, they're moving out of there, so hopefully there is actually some interest in these matches in the arena. Um, this is a match we expected. I mean, they put on a great match. I, I love the way they did it. Um, Pentagon hits a Pentagon driver. Aries is able to put his foot on the rope. Uh, the two have an exchange outside the ring. Great exchange back and forth. Uh, Aries puts Pentagon in the last chancery. They end up both getting counted out. Austin Aries is like, no, 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 that's not how this is happening. This is bullshit. If you have the balls, I want the match restarted, and let's go. They ring the bell, restart. Both men battle onto the outside again. I think Aries hit a Death Valley driver on the apron, and then Pentagon Jr. hits a Pentagon driver. Oh, no, no, a package pile driver on the... Uh, apron, both men down, don't get up for the 10 count. This time, Pentagon grabs the microphone and says, I want to restart the match. So, at this point, the ref is calling for the bell. Aries kicks Pentagon Jr. below the belt, hits the brain buster. We have a new world champion, Austin Aries. Um, that was it. Pretty much ended the show right after that. I like the way they did this because it's kind of like you, you're just kind of like, wait, what the hell just happened? The show's over, and then it kind of makes you want to tune in next week. So 
very interesting to see where they go here. Um, but, yeah, good match. Overall, really good show. I enjoyed it. Like I said, these TV specials I really enjoy. We have the Windsor tapings tonight. Um, and, yeah, that's pretty much all I have for you guys. I hope you enjoyed my review. Leave a comment in the section below. Like, dislike. Let me know what you thought. And until next time, thanks for checking out my video. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks, guys. Bye.